Okay, so, hello. We're just going to put together an old system from bits found from computer past. We have an old socket 370 board here. We've got a Celeron 633 processor. Uh, this board will probably take up to something like a 1 GHz Pentium 3, although there were a few that were quicker than that. And it's got an AGP, lots of PCI, ISA slot, IDE. It does not have SATA anywhere. It's got a 20 pin power connector here. And we've got an A open 300 watt power supply. And what I've just noticed looking at another power supply I've got is that this is an, this one is an. FSP group power supply and if you look at the internal layout of parts this A open one and even the stickers are all very very similar so I suspect that the A open one oops, slightly different this is 300 watts the A open one 250 watts FSP but I suspect they're actually very similar tested these previously so I know they work and um, we've got a 256 megabyte 100 megahertz SD RAM you can get 133 megahertz SD RAM for the chips that run at faster speeds and we'll put this in here and these bits click in. The chip has pins on the back. I've checked this earlier, made sure they're not bent. And we'll put this in here. The dot, oh no, this arrow lines up with this bit. And just goes in very smoothly. Just locks it in place. And I'm going to just put a dab of thermal paste on the chip's actually quite small. It doesn't have a heat spreader on it. So I'll just put a dab on here using Arctic Silver 5. And this is just a budget, budget heat sink here, very small. But it should be adequate for um, this processor from my 633 megahertz and it clips on like so help it spread the thermal paste slightly and if you want you can um, just check make sure it's spread yep that's spread all over the um, die of the CPU. What I would do if I was going to spend more time on this, I would um, spend more time cleaning the bottom of this um, heatsink, or I'd use a different heatsink. And um, we will need a graphics card. There is no graphics card built into this motherboard at all. But well. Put in an AGP graphics card here. And it's at this point I'm going to realise that I would be better off moving this somewhere else because of this bit that sticks down here. I could put it on the edge of the uh, table here. Yeah, that's fine. We've got a graphics card, we've got memory. Graphics card, memory, processor, power. This is a 20 pin power connector. So, this has got a notch here, and this notch clicks into place. 
being careful not to get this wire clicks and locks into place. So you don't have to plug in an extra connector anywhere for any other power on this motherboard. Um, I've got a CPU fan connected, there's a case fan and there's a back fan connection that's quite good. Some of these you don't get many connections. Um, and we're going to need a keyboard and mouse. I've been using a um, USB keyboard and mouse with a little adapter from Logitech and that's actually worked surprisingly well on a lot of the systems, older systems that I've been using. Um, it also helps that it's wireless so we'll just um, get that connected give this some power at this stage we just want to see if this motherboard and processor posts successfully um, and I am hoping that it could be wrong I am hoping that the processor configuration is in the BIOS nice thing about old power supplies or high quality power supplies is the on off switch so you can actually switch it off before connecting it and then switch it on got a red light here which shows the motherboard's at least partially happy with everything so far and just making no strange noises nothing of concern although we should Next up, the display. Like so. And then we can switch it on. Even though there's no switch, we can short the on off switch. Um, Ah, there are some settings here for the front side bus speed. Here, um, front side bus selectors, so we've got to choose 66, 100 or 33. And also the possibility of auto. So if we want 66, we want 2 to 3. Um, we've got... JFSB1, JFSB2, front side bus setting, auto. And there are some jumpers, there's another jumper here. There's jumpers back there. These just come off and you can put them back on. And the idea being that you move them to a different position if you need to. And this here is the power switch. That would be where we would connect the power switch, so that's what I will need to connect to switch it on. It looks like, because this is closed, closed, the front side bush setting is on auto. So we should be good to go with that. Modern computers, you don't need to bother with this kind of thing. It's all just done in the BIOS all automatically. Older computers. A lot of the time you had to configure it with jumpers. Okay, we've got power. Switch the power on. Got a red light. And um, let's switch this on. See what happens. Okay, let's just go for it. Let's switch it on. And it was that one I think or was it the next one we're not getting anything got power it's switched on got a processor fans connected power's connected there's no built in um, there's no built in speaker on this motherboard so there's, which is unfortunate because a speaker would tell you or beep at you if there were problems. Hmm, it's not switching on. 
So we might need to um, put something on here. ACC has got a this you must turn off AC 1 to 2, normal 2 to 3. So normal 2 to 3. Switch it off. Switch it on. Let's try again. Aha! There was a missing um, jumper here. That was needed to tell the computer that everything was normal except we are not getting anything on screen at the moment which again means there could be something going on what I'll do now is I'll get the um, get a PC speaker to connect almost will reach okay we are back we have um, Got the speaker connected. It was one point further along. Um, and what we're getting when we switch on is basically lots of beeps so we can switch this off now this is most likely going to be something to do with the memory we can try this one clearing the BIOS that's made no difference And the most likely problem is to do with the memory. So this is a single-sided stick of RAM. Um, let's try this double-sided stick of RAM. Let's see if this makes a difference. No. Oh, oh, that's a different amount of beats. So that means that we were getting beep, 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 three beats, which again is something to do with the memory. So um, we've got some memory. And this is another piece of memory, double sided. I'll try this one. Nice click when that goes in. Let's switch this on. Still not happy. Got some more memory can try. Thank you. 
Hmm. This time we're not getting any beeps. We're also not getting anything on the display. that we're basically looking at a faulty motherboard we could try the other slots We got one beep. One beep is normally a fairly successful sign. However, there is nothing showing up on the screen. Let's um, switch it off. Switch it off with the power. screen. Okay. Let's try a different graphics card. lift off we have an actual computer booting CMOS check some errors that's fine so presumably that means that these two memory cards memory slots don't work or full of dust or damaged in some way Interesting. Well, um, let's have a look in the BIOS. I think um, it's got CPU options, and you could even overclock the um, CPU. USB keyboard wireless. It's a CPU temperature 29C. It doesn't know the CPU fan speed. Ah, this is because this fan has got a three pin connector, but the um, actual fan doesn't has only got two wires. So ideally we'd definitely upgrade that so that it the computers aware of the speed of the fan and can control it when it needs to if it gets hot load optimized 
BIOS settings and let's just check if it's got any idea on the time and date. No, it thinks it's 2002. We've got no floppy drive. And we've got 128 mega RAM. So let's save and exit. And so oh, that was just a reset. What I wanted to do was put this jumper on auto and then see if the BIOS options change. Presumably you could quite easily overclock the system if you wanted. But then with old systems the processors are so um, cheaply available there's not much benefit overclocking these days old systems because um, you can just, um, just buy a newer system buy a newer processor there's so many computer systems since this kind of computer um, not you know a massive amount of benefit in um, overclocking anymore except for fun you know why not um, what we want to do now I mean this memory might be alright it might just be this, the actual slots um, but if we connect up the CD-ROM and hard drive and you'll notice um, what we've got here is that's the floppy drive connector which we're not going to use we've got two IDE cables and you'll notice that one of them has twice as many um, wires so this is the older style slower and then the newer kind is faster and allows for quicker transfer speeds for hard drives so we will connect the ID1 is blue you'll also notice that it's handily colour coded there's a notch so you know where you're putting it and we will connect the hard drive to the blue for higher speed transfer and we will connect the CD-ROM to the other cable um, this does not have a notch and it also doesn't have a blanked out pin so in terms of lining it up you want to line up the red edge to the dot here it's marked on the motherboard that's where the red line goes so you know you've got the cable the right way around Um, because we're just using a cable per device, we don't need to worry about master slave, cable select, etc. I mean really I should be putting this all in a case but in terms of just testing it easy to um, swap things out for example if I was testing this and the motherboard didn't work at all then there would be no point putting that in a case okay 
what we'll do now is we'll just switch it on see if this is recognizing these drives and then we will probably look at um, putting this computer into a case because now I've seen that the motherboard works to an extent um, it's detected hard drive 80 gig which is nice CD drive which is good there's no operating system on the hard drive which is fine on this PC we might be able to boot from USB drive and then start a Windows install from that but we will leave that to another video for the time being um, what we have now is a working system and um, switch it off and I'll just show you the specifications Intel Celeron 633 meg cache memory that's the processor cache and um, we don't have anything to boot from but we do have a working system just as a very quick guide to SD RAM memory you've got SD SD RAM you have both 100 megahertz and you have 133 megahertz but you also have CL2 and CL3 which is the CAS latency and the lower this is the better so CL2 is better than CL3 but then this is 100 megahertz and this is 133 and you also have to find, know if your system will support this memory or whether it will need double sided for example this is a 256 megabyte piece of memory but it's single sided and some systems won't support that they would much rather prefer 256 megabytes of double sided SD RAM and you've got other SD RAM that just isn't labelled at all so what speed this is what the cast latency is you would probably have to look up these chips to find out what they are here's another where we've just got 128 so we know it's 128 gig but then we don't know what performance it gives and this one's PC100 but does not say the cast latency performance whereas these do we've got Samsung Samsung MT Micron technology now uh, we've got Infineon and over here we've even got Hyundai chips 